challenges. set up. Now right down below us, it might be hard for uh, Jay to, to pan down here. There is a major road that is right below the helicopter now, and the, the, the traffic, there are hundreds of cars that are on this road that are probably creating uh, problems for the emergency workers trying to get in and out. Uh, probably people out here rubbernecking, perhaps people that are trying to get home to see if their homes are okay after work. Uh, but in the general area where the, where the major damage is, uh, perhaps the police have this area uh, uh, quartered off and they're not letting people get into it. So that, that perhaps is why you are not seen. Now right down there in the middle of your screen you see that there is the traffic and this is just uh, about a half a mile to the west of the area where most of the damage is. And as we come around I can see where police have this area going into where the damage is. They have uh, barricades up, they have orange cones and they have a police officer there that's blocking off the area. But as we fly around this whole area here, there, there's people that are trying to get into it for whatever reason, but the whole area of, from our vantage point appears to be sealed off, and that's why that you're not seeing like that in the immediate area. Bill, you've seen uh, tornadoes before, Bullitt County in particular, 74 here uh, in our own backyard. Uh, how would you rate this damage? How does that stack up? I would rate this one as major. If there had been more uh, uh, residential area, uh, more homes in this immediate area where this industrial park is, I think we would have some major damage. We're going to fly down if you stay with us for just a minute. Just on, we're, we're going to go down here to the east of where this uh, industrial park is, and we're going to give you a, a shot of these homes that we were just talking about, that they just flattened this one house, the other house. It just took the second floor right off of the, of the house, so it, it did not, uh, it, it just, it, it, the winds just came through here. Now let me get my bearing here. Okay, there's the, uh, that is a, another furniture plant. Jay, if you'll come back to our right, you stay with us just for one minute. We're going to show you these homes here that are just flattened. And this is just east of the uh, industrial park, right in here, up there at the top, right there in the center of your screen. That house is just flattened. So if there were more homes in this area, we would have major damage. So if I were going to relate this to the Brooks uh, area, this would this uh, tornado was much more powerful. Look at the damage there. There's just nothing left. Uh, just just to the right of this house here, there's a house that just the, the first floor stands. The second floor was totally uh, blown off of this home. So the, right there on the screen there, that house, it, it, it appears the first floor is there, but the second floor is totally removed. So the, 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 the wind and the, the strength of this tornado goes very strong. And if there had been more homes in this area, I think the devastation would have been catastrophic. You're certainly right, Bill. We just got word from the Kentucky State Police also that they do not want people in that area. They're trying to keep the roads clear so the emergency vehicles can get through. So please stay off the roads in that area unless you have business there. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and that certainly is true. Andy Alcock is also down in Litchfield. Uh, he joins us by the phone. Hi, Andy. 
Hi, Rick. How you doing? I'm in the Kuiper subdivision, and there's some damage here. It doesn't sound as bad as what Bill was talking about. There's certainly trees all over the place. Some snap like twigs here. There's some that have been uprooted right from the ground. Certainly there are plenty of roofs that have been damaged here, but in large part, I think a lot of these folks are feeling fairly lucky because nobody that we've talked to, at least in the immediate area, has been hurt or, or seriously injured or killed or whatever. Uh, there is sort of a cleanup effort going on, but actually a lot of people are just sort of walking around with days looks on their face surveying the damage here in the area. We spoke to one lady who says she simply can't live in her home. The roof was ripped off the top of it. A lot of damage on the inside. She said she hid in the bathtub for the entire length of the storm and heard the home exploding with the roof and windows and so forth. And I'm just looking at her right now, and she's just sitting out in her driveway with a sort of blank expression on her face. And, you know, she really doesn't know what she's going to do next. And I guess a lot of the folks here feel the same way. We also spoke about the situation with the roads. It was very difficult for us to get here. Traffic is very heavy in the Litchfield area. This Kuiper subdivision is north of the downtown area. And when we managed to get off the Western Kentucky Parkway, it was probably a good half hour to 45 minutes for us to get here. So there are a lot of people out, and it is making it much more difficult for some of the emergency vehicles to get around. There are also power lines down here in the area. So it, it does have the potential to still be dangerous, even though the storm has passed. Back to the studio. We're looking at pictures now of the Kuiper subdivision and behind it, that subdivision. That may be off of yeah. uh, Lilac yeah. Road. And look how far the damage is scattered yeah. out. Yeah, which is an indication of a, extremely uh, strong winds with something like that. What worries me, you know, we're hearing minor injuries, but when you've got that much damage and perhaps some people they haven't heard from yet, it makes you wonder if... Well, we've been getting, and we've been getting a lot of phone calls in here. People want to know the exact portions of the city that have hit because they do have relatives down there and they, they can't get through. But... Uh, this is on the north side of town, is right, that correct? Right, that's right. And near the okay. fairgrounds area, so if you're familiar with Litchfield, near the fairgrounds, the industrial park, and specifically that Kuiper, K-I-P-E-R subdivision. Okay. I want to go back to digital Doppler radar. Okay, well, there's Area 3 again as we continue to get out. Uh, the home's a little further separated. You see, you know, one home is fine, and there's another one uh, basically totally destroyed there. Mm -hmm. uh, if, I'm, I'm trying to study this because... Uh, Oh, you know, I don't know how large that home was, Jackie, but when you lose your walls like that, those exterior walls, that's a sign of an F3 tornado. Again, I don't know. Uh, you see, okay, you see a couple of the walls standing there, the rest of the home destroyed. I, hope uh, I, mean, we, I mean, we could be talking 200 mile per hour wind possibly trees, with that. Yeah, just the huge trees, uh, just flattened. And you notice the, the trees are in different directions. That's a sign of the swirling winds there. It's not the straight line winds. You can see those two trees were in different directions there uh, and just snapped off. Man, this is just horrible. Uh, and what is our latest injury count that we have officially? John, what we have officially, again, I mean, you know, you realize how much damage there is. Initially, 20 mm -hmm. to 30 people taken to the hospital there. It's the, the Twin Lakes Regional Medical Center. Broken bones, cuts, but it, it could be tough to even know who's hurt out there at this point. Okay, and then for the people just tuning in, uh, I want to show you a map of the path of this tornado again. This uh, touched down in Grayson County and uh, went across the 